we were growing a plant, right? And uh, there are things growing on it. That isn't what we are, that isn't pathogen, like a pathogen that we're growing. morning so today i'm going to demonstrate or take you with me through a method that is essential for working in a microbiology lab or plant pathology lab it has to do with isolating maintaining working with pure cultures so in this case i'll be isolating a sample or fungal isolate from a, an, an environmental sample so the team who they grew the plants they had uh, some symptoms on some of the plants that they were growing and those symptoms did not look like anything that we're actively working with or that i've inoculated those plants with so what i'm going to do as a first step is to take a sample i asked them to take a sample they did that and i'm going to like sterilize it use surface sterilize it using a weak concentration of bleach and then I am going to plate it on to a very general or standard media that pretty much every culturable fungus will grow on and that is potato dextrose agar. I'm going to use two. I'm going to use a media that is sugar rich so the potato dextrose. Dextrose is a sugar agar solid surface and I'm going to use one that's nutrient poor, which is tap water agar. And as the name suggests, it's just tap water and agar. And so what both of these media, media will do is they'll facilitate the growth of those microbes that will grow faster and those that will grow slow. So the first part of the step is I'm going to cut small pieces, put it on the plate, incubate it. I'm going to try to get different angles touching different surfaces of the plate because sometimes you'll have the microbe or the fungus bacteria like in the little crevices of whatever sample one is using and once that's done I'll incubate it in the dark for standard practices for maybe three to five days checking to see if I see growth and then I will repeatedly take a piece of the colony that has growing, grow it onto a new plate until I only have one colony growing on my plate. So that will be a pure colony. And because it's not something that we're actively trying to identify down to what species it is, we won't or I won't be running any DNA extraction because then that would be the second step after I have obtained a pure colony from a contaminated sample. You do DNA extraction, removing the DNA, then you amplify it, make more of the small pieces of it in uh, using PCR, polymer polymerase chain reaction. So these are molecular biology steps or techniques. And when you do the PCR test for COVID and other viruses, fungus, bacteria, that's what they do. And once that's done, I would then look at the bands, look at the fragments of it, the size, etc. using agarose gel electrophoresis, clean that up, so purify it, another step, before I prepare it to be sent off for DNA sequencing, which would basically give you a percentage based on publicly available genomes, which is just like a, a massive bank that contains all the genes that have been discovered for a particular organism plant, animal, fungus, bacteria, sea life, etc. But I'm not doing all of that, so I'm just going to do the first agar base or culture dependent step. So that's what you'll see. So come along. I'll be demonstrating isolation of microbes, whether it's bacteria or fungus. In this case, it's going to be fungus from environmental sample. And in this case, it's going to be plant matter. The plant growth team, they're growing some plants and they noticed that there are these white fuzzy growth on the leaves. You see that, right? And it's not, it wasn't infected with anything that I have been using, being the resident <laughs> microbiologist. And so they took a sample and I'm going to 
isolate it to see what it is. These are aerial roots. This particular plant produces aerial roots. There are white fuzzy material on it, which are not root hairs. There's more. Let me see if I can get it out. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, as I say, isolate it. And that is what I'll show you what I'm I've how already to do. made the agar plate, so that's what I'm going to retrieve. I link a video that has how I made it. If you're interested in seeing that. And I store them at 4 degrees Celsius. I could store them at room temperature in the lab, but I'd rather put them at 4 degrees Celsius. So that's what I'm doing. I'll take them back to the lab and then I'll start the process of isolating uh, the fungus from the plant matter. joke that I spend a lot of time as in a microbiology lab labeling like most of my tasks involve labeling but it's important so that you can identify what you're doing so I'm just preparing my wash station so I have ethanol 70% water and bleach solution I am preparing the utensils so I have a scapulin blade and a forcep I'm heat sterilizing it so dip them in ethanol put them into a flameless incinerator sterilizing it getting the two plates ready. So remember there's potato dextrous agar, the sugar rich for the fast growers and tap water agar for the slow growers because, because it is a sample that was just in the air, growing in the, the growth chamber. There are different microbes that are on it. That's a sample. I will take a photo of it because a picture is worth a thousand words and it's always important. It's part of my observation process. And here I am decontaminating. So I rinse them first in some water, dry them, I'll rinse them in the ethanol and so forth, bleach, so forth. Then I cut them in really small pieces and stick them on the different agar at different angles with enough room in between them. Why the different angles? Because the microbes tend to grow on different surfaces of the matter. So I just want to have as much chance of having something growing on my plate. I decontaminate with ethanol again in between and I move on. So yeah, enjoy. So these are the plates that I showed you how to isolate pathogen from plant materials. And if you can see, so this I call contamination. These ones I'll say are likely what one would expect to grow in it. These pinkish, oh the light is terrible, pinkish ones. There's some over here. This also have some other things growing on it. So this might be some sort of physarium. So what I would do if I was doing a continuous process, I would cut a small piece from here, from the very corner, the growing edge, and I would put it onto a new clean one of these plates. Now that I have figured out that it's a pink isolate that were responsible for the fuzzy growth that the team saw on the plant, I'm now going to go again and transfer small pieces from the corner, the very edge of the pink colonies, onto new potato dextrose agar plates. 
And this step is called subculturing. It's just a series of transferring samples or isolates from one plate or one medium type into another one. So on a clean plate. And that's what you'll see me doing. And I think I'm going to stop it at this round. I'm not going to do several more. If on the new plate, only pink colonies grow, then I know that I have a pure culture. And then that's good enough. It's just going to be a repeat of part of the process that you saw earlier. Once I'm done transferring the pieces from the old plate to the new plate, I will seal the plates with parafilm, that stretchy plastic material, as a second step to prevent contamination. And I'll put them into the incubator, set I think at 25 degrees Celsius dark for them to grow for about five to seven days. I think it's Fizerium, the plant grow team had, and maybe other things, but this is definitely some sort of Fizerium species. So it's the genus is Fizerium, and they're very colorful. They range in different colors. I'm always curious to see what the spores or the cells look like under the microscope. So I'm just using an inoculating loop to collect some samples from the agar plate. And see, I'm putting it on the slide. And these are what the cells look like. That one is blurry. <laughs> but do you see the peachish pinkish um, colors like in the hyphae? And yep, I'm mostly seeing the pinkish color, the pigmentation. And I think I have some spores too. I wasn't doing a very good job at collecting the images because they're pretty blurry and shaky, but <laughs> that's for the cookie crumble. I don't have like a mount, so I have to use my camera and try to hold it while adjusting the microscope. But look at spores! 